uh, I thought this little uh, next little project might be worth documenting. It's uh, it might not seem like a big project overall for the boat, but it's a fairly complicated one for me. In that, what I'm doing, I've got the um, cockpit combings to build, uh, which run on a curve around the deck, at back to about here from the from the back of the cabin, and. There's three angles I need to try and get right. One is the shear of the deck. Um, the next one is the curve where it comes around fore and aft. So it's, it's fairly straight from here to here. Then it has a nice little curve into the cabin. And then the top edge of it comes down to, uh, to about so height down here. But it has a very slight uh, convex curve as it comes down. So. Uh, it's a sort of a complicated one for me to show because I've never done it before. But to, co to add um, a bit more complexity to it or a bit more of a challenge to it, because of the way I've built the deck with the sides already built in and everything closed in, access underneath is virtually impossible other than a little bit through here. So mechanically passing it as I build it isn't really an option. So what I've got to do is get the curve right I've got to try and hold the curve. I'll steam the timber to do it. It'll be a piece of hewn pine, one solid piece of hewn pine. And I've got to try and get that curve to stay put while I glue it down. Um, when I did the cabin sides, I had a framework up where I was able to steam the cabin sides and pull it tight into the framework so I'd hold it in place as the glue went off. In this case here, I think what I'll do is I'll actually make up a jig that'll sit just beside it to try and hold it in place. There's really nowhere else for me to pull it across. I can't do, but I don't really want to do both sides at once because I think there's too much involved. So I want to do the starboard side first, get that right, and um, let's see how that goes. So I'll document it, it might be worth watching. Um, I might completely stuff it up yet, it, it's, uh, but if, if I stuff it up, you'll see it. So, <laughs> so um, we'll see how I go.
Okay, so I've got the combing pretty much shaped up and trimmed, and uh, the top edge is shaped how I want it. The bottom edge is roughly shaped to the deck, to the camber of the deck, but I'll finalise that once I've got it curved and sitting in place before I glue it. Uh, the next trick is to get this curved to match the curve of the um, the curve that I want around the um, <laughs> vertically, I guess. So the plan is to steam it. This is my steaming setup. This is the clamp, the, the, the jig that I'll clamp this to to get the curve. And then I've got a couple of tricks up my sleeve that will help, hopefully help me to, uh, to keep the curve matching what I want it to be. I've got the jig a little bit packed out, a few mil, um, to allow for a little bit of spring back. And then my next attempt to try and get this thing to stay the way I want it to, is to um, in the underneath the cam the combing, I've cut a slot. Now this is a bit experimental, so I'll see how it goes. But I'll um, once I've got it on the jig, I'll, I'll steam it. I'll let it dry overnight on the jig, and then tomorrow morning, uh, epoxy glue a strip of Oregon into here, and that should again help it hold it in place. So. Um, it's a bit of trial and error and I'll see how it goes, but uh, you'll see in the coming video, I guess, as to whether it works or not, or whether it's a complete waste of time. I might have wasted a bit of nice human pine. But, uh, so I've got a, uh, a gas burner down here, and um, this is my steam box. I'm bashing with the tripod here. So there's my um, gas burner and steam box. So I've just got to wait for the water to boil. There's nothing going into the steam box at the moment, but um, it'll take a little while for the water to boil. Then once that's boiled, um, and I've got a decent amount of steam in the box, it'll probably take about, I don't know, 30 minutes, an hour, for me to get the right heat onto my hue and pine um, before I can actually start clamping that in place. But Alright, so that's it. It's uh, clamped in place. I'll leave it overnight. Um, nothing ever goes as smooth as you expect it to. The, um, the slots I'd cut for the uh, spines were squashing up, but uh, it's okay. I think everything's worked out alright. Um, up, I put this outer layer of uh, ply on when I was clamping it up just to protect the wood, protect the hill and pine from bruising. I've had that before where I bruised the pine, so that just protects it from the clamps from bruising. And uh, I'll see how well it holds its shape tomorrow morning. And um, likely as not, I'll, I'll epoxy a spline in. That's a 50 mil deep slot, and I'll epoxy that in tomorrow morning. And I'll clamp it up to a smaller jig, a little transportable jig that I can um, still hold the same shape. But um, hopefully, it'll allow me to keep it on a jig while I glue it in place um, in a couple of days. And it looks like we're just about to beat a storm, so I might shut this down and um, shut the shed up and, and go inside. The puppy dog's starting to worry about thunder and lightning, so uh, I'll, get out of the, I'll get out of the shed. We just beat that inside. It's, uh, it's coming down really nicely, but we really need it. It's been starting to get a bit dry, but uh, this is nice. A bit of rain. Hope it hangs around for a little bit.
you'll see straight away there's a huge amount of screen back. It hasn't worked very well. So, I'll clamp that back up again. And try my next trick. Okay, so let's see how much this springs back now that I've glued the um, the Oregon spline in there. It's going to be interesting to see. I've got no idea what to expect. Looks it. Yeah, there's still a lot of spring back. Well, so it's, it's not as successful as I was expecting or hoping. Hmm. still work with it. That just, um, as awkward as it might seem, that gives me a way of getting it up onto the boat and holding it in shape while I get the, um, the base epoxied down. And, um, and then I can get some mechanical fastings in it after the base is hooked off. So before I do that though, I'll take it off here. I've got to, I need to plane the, the base to about from seven degrees back to five degrees just for the um, camera of the deck clean up the front edge here and I've also got to make up the piece that goes up over the, f the forward end which looks roughly like that but that when that's knocked off that goes up over the for the front end and gets glued to the cabin side so I've got to make all that up yet so I've got a bit to do yet before I can glue this in place.
This plane that I'm using, it's a compass plane. I can flex up and down. So on the deck side, this deck camber side, I've got a little bit of curve that way to help with the camera of the deck. Not too much, it's very it's very shallow. better than the flat plane. While I'm shaping up this starboard cockpit combing, I've got the um, port side one on the steaming jig uh, already steamed up and now with that spline glued in um, so I can let that cook off today while I get this one shaped. Not too bad, believe it or not. Not perfect. That. Actually, I'm pretty happy with that. It still needs a bit of a tune up, so I'll, um, I'll take a little bit more off just around the middle, just a, a, a sliver just to get it a bit more flush around the middle there. So I think. In all honesty, once it's done, a, a blind man, the galloping horse, would be pretty pleased to see it. So I'm pretty happy with it, actually. Um, surprisingly, I thought that might take a bit more effort to get it to fit better, but it's, uh, it's in pretty good shape. Just a chunk of hue and pine uh, that I'm using for the corner posts of all the cabin sides. I've already cut the corner posts out, and I'll be using it for the forward edges of the um, of the cockpit combings as well. So this this piece here. On the right here, I'm about to cut up for the forward edges of the cockpit combing. It's beautiful wood, it's got a lot of figure in it. One's a glue mix with a bit of uh, hue and pine sawdust in there, hue and pine, hue and pine sawdust for colour.
This has gone off over nicely, the epoxy is nice and dry. Uh, but I'll confess that before I take this jig off, take the clamps off of this bending jig here, um, I'm rather nervous about how well this is going to hold together. Uh, it could fail spectacularly. I've got the only fastenings I've got in here, I've got a, a copper pin through here that was to help me to locate the, uh, the, the rail in place. I've got a um, stainless screw, 75mm screw, um, down into a frame at the back here. And I've got two screws up forward, up, uh, right up um, on the front end in, the, in that block through the cabin side. So I've got epoxy, a rod, three screws holding this in place, and there is a fair bit of pressure on the bend. So we'll see, this could fail spectacularly, but uh, you'll get to see it. So let's see what happens. That. <laughs> so I'm pretty pleased with that. That went about as good as I could have hoped for, really, and uh, I don't know what I was so nervous about. It's nice and firm. In fact, I don't even think I need to put screws in through the side here. It's, it looks good. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, A limber hole just there for any water that catches in behind the cockpit. So that's it. They're done. And I'm pretty happy with how they came out. They're solid. They look good. It's hue and pine, so it's, um, it's a bit of a soft timber, but I'm pretty happy with it. I like it. <laughs>